It's a simple one. Nuclear is our greatest threat worldwide. Not even a question, not even close. So I'd like to denuke the world. I would like Russia and the United States and China and Pakistan and many other countries that have nuclear weapons get rid of them. President Trump saying that his real wish is to get rid of nuclear weapons, even after threatening this week to launch a first strike against North Korea. So how do you explain these conflicting impulses? But we bring in a nuclear expert. Joining me now is Elizabeth Sherwood Randall. She is the former Deputy Secretary of Energy in the Obama administration, a former White House WMD coordinator and expert at the Pentagon as well. And she was in charge of the nuclear arsenal. So I guess you were surprised to learn that after you left office in January, in the next six months, President Trump managed to modernize the entire trillion dollar modernization of the arsenal. Well, President Obama set in place a nuclear security agenda that included reducing our reliance on nuclear weapons, reducing the number of nuclear weapons in the world, and ensuring that our nuclear arsenal remains safe, secure, and effective against any threats we might face. So that includes a long term modernization program that takes years, not months, to achieve. So, what was done? I guess there was a a memo signed on January 27th ordering a review, which would be understandable to what is the situation, what do we need to do. So that's basically what was done so far, right? Usually administrations conduct a nuclear posture review in which they examine what they've inherited and what they believe is necessary. Again, that takes a lot of time and effort. The Obama administration uh, issued new nuclear employment guidance in uh, new nuclear employment guidance in 2013, which emphasized the importance of creating more options for a president in a crisis. And I think that's one of the critical issues today, is that you don't want to have to escalate immediately to the use of a nuclear weapon. You want to have a range of options that come forward to a president, and it's one of the areas in which our military has been working very aggressively to generate those options to manage crises. What about back-channel talks with the regime? Uh, as you sit in the NSC or, or in the State Department Pentagon, uh, how do we approach back-channel talks, which are now reported today, to be underway with a regime that we say we're not talking to? So I don't know anything about these talks. I've seen the news reports right. this morning as well. We do have a lot of experience talking with the North Koreans over many administrations. And there I would uh, inject a note of caution, which is that our experience has been that when negotiating with the North Koreans, they lie and cheat. And so, of course, a previous nuclear agreement, when they agreed to cease their plutonium enrichment program, they were simultaneously conducting uranium enrichment covertly. So if we're going to have a negotiation, one of the most important elements will be intrusive verification and monitoring up front, because otherwise you can't have any reason to have confidence that they would be executing on what they commit to do. What do we know about their arsenal? I know there's the new intelligence, which started with the DIA assessment, which I've been told has been uh, confirmed by other agencies in the intelligence community. But what we don't know is whether they have tested. We don't know of any tests of this new, newly miniaturized weapon, the warhead. So every time the North Koreans have tested since beginning their nuclear tests uh, about 10 years ago and their ballistic missile tests quite frequently, of course, in the last year, they are improving their capabilities. What they haven't yet been able to do is marry those capabilities, the ballistic missile capabilities and the nuclear weapons. What they seek to do is to achieve that goal. And so, of course, we are working working very hard to ensure that we can counter any threat they might present, including through our deterrent, but also through our missile defenses. And there we have to work to advance the capabilities both regionally that we have in place, and there was a significant deployment under the Obama administration of regional capabilities, and then our strategic defenses as well, in which President Obama made a commitment to enhance what we have in the United States to counter a long-range threat from the North Koreans. Uh, from what you know of the THAAD missile defense system, if they were to fire multiple missiles, I mean, does that, I really don't mean to boil this down to, you know, the lay the layman's way of thinking about it, but would that confuse the system? How, well, we how have, flexible we have, is we that? We have multiple system? systems in place to address a variety of threats. and. 
my confidence level is high that we will be able to meet the challenge. As we look at our ground-based missile defenses from the United States, we're looking at a few shots that might be taken in the future. Presently, we don't believe he has that capability, but he's working to achieve it. And there, we are sized to match that threat. Our ground-based defenses aren't designed against the Russian threat, for example, which would be much more substantial. It's always great to see you. Thanks so much. I hope hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.